NewYorkPost.com. NYPD cops don't lift a finger as 11-year-old is beaten in broad daylight. NYPD cops had a front row seat to a five-on-one brawl but let the violence play out rather than doing their jobs to break it up. The Post has learned an 11-year-old girl was slapped, punched, kicked, and even shot with a stun gun by a group of five other girls after a basketball game around 7 p.m. Sunday on East 125th Street near, near Madison Avenue in Harlem. During the roughly four-minute beatdown, cops sat idly in nearby cruisers, but they didn't get out until the girl was bloody and bruised, a post photographer observed. Now, there's so many problems with this story, right? The cops apparently used the excuse that there was an angry mob there that, that kept them away. But we're talking about a, a beatdown that an 11-year-old girl survived and a group of police officers couldn't break up. And what's there's there's a bigger point to be made here, first of all, about what this represents as the sad state of affairs that we have in America for law enforcement and public safety because we have entrusted it to government. Like, I want, if, if I lived in a city where this, this was a, a possible occurrence, I would want there to be a public safety security force that's ready to use force to intervene to defend people when there is a crime with a victim, when there is uh, an actual violation of the natural law. And that's the kind of thing we expect police to do. Now, one of the other things that's wrong with this story is it's, it's, it's sort of implying that the cops normally would break up such a fight. And it's like, no, we've, we've seen this. In fact, the police have fought for this legally uh, as the Supreme Court has affirmed. They have no obligation to protect you. You could be this girl. You could be her family. You could be, uh, I mean, even if you're not a minor, right? You could be an 18-year-old adult in America and be standing next to a police officer and someone could beat the crap out of you and the police officer can stand there and do nothing and he is not committing a crime. Even though in some places it's it's a crime as a, as a, under Good Samaritan laws. Uh, well, he's not going to get pursued under that. But by the Supreme Court's ruling, they don't have any liability in that situation they don't have a duty or responsibility to protect so this you know at least here's the thing this is not like just you know an, an incident out of the blue at least 20 police cars were nearby on the street with at least one a little more than a car length away photo so police sources told the post the young girl was treated at Mount Sinai Hospital after being cut, bruised, and shocked in the stomach with a stun gun. The girl told cops she didn't know her attackers, but knew two of their handles on social media, sources said. Now, you know, I, I got to step back and look at this from, first, the perspective of restorative justice, right? Like, the, the, these kinds of crimes happen because we don't have a community base or any kind of mechanism, really, for holding them accountable, the justice, or, or rather, excuse me, the legal system, it's not a justice system, that's <laughs> silly me. The legal system in America is set up in, in such a way that it denies access to poor people. And, and I know this even from personal experience, having had, a, I, I hate to go back to this story, but when I got back from Iraq with my deployment money, I bought a motorcycle and, and I had it stolen from in front of my dorm in, in California and trashed and actually recovered. And I got a judgment for restitution against the guy who stole it and trashed it never saw a dime of that money you know but you, you know that was a that was a lucky break to even get to that point you can't hold people accountable but if you had instead of the police and you know there's a lot of room for this to happen now and i really encourage people to do this as much as you can if it's appropriate for your community to start you know the organizations for restorative community justice so that at least this 11 year old girl in this case could confront the people who did it because they did it on the record they did it on video like, uh, th th there should be a way for the community to hold them accountable for damages to their victim. And, and you don't have that with the government system. And, and th 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 we don't have officers to even intervene in the system. Like, yeah, you, you, what, what are you paying the cops for? And a part of it is this illusion that you're paying the cops for public safety. You're not. You're paying them to enforce laws. They are not public safety officers. They are law enforcement officers. Does the term police describe both? I don't care. Defund the government police, fund community police, fund public safety officers, not law enforcement officers who enforce the law, which is written by politicians at the best of special interests. You know, and this is really what it comes down to, taxation is theft, enforcing tax laws, keeping people uh, oppressed 
so that the super rich keep getting richer and the poor and really everybody else keep getting poorer. So they said that they were outnumbered, projectiles were thrown at them. They were forced to reposition and call every available resource in the area because there was, there was an unruly crowd. You know, I, the department also shared footage it claimed to show people throwing balls at cops who tried to intervene, although it was unclear when or where the footage was shot. And it does not show the girl being attacked. But the post photographer said he observed no bottles being tossed at police, though he was on the scene after hearing reports of unruly an unruly crowd nearby some 45 minutes prior. It was not known if arrests were made in connection with the fight. No, why would they? The hands-off approach comes as the police unions challenge abortion in New York City's chokehold bill that makes it a misdemeanor crime to use any technique during arrest that could limit breathing. Really? Really? This is this is how the I mean, this is so pathetic. Can, can we not just call this out for what it is? The police are saying we can't do our jobs unless you let us use techniques that allow us to limit breathing. With all the money and technology, it, because they don't want to de-escalate. And if you had cops who were public safety officers who were, who were accountable to the communities that they serve, then this wouldn't even be an issue because those resources would go towards avoiding the situations where, oh, the city has to pay a million dollars to the next victim of police brutality. That's on the taxpayers. You know, it's, it's like Thomas Howell says about, you know, economic decisions in general. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. For, for society to entrust decisions to people who face no consequences for being wrong. Well, that's what's happened with police. That's what qualified immunity is. But even at a bigger level, protection from liability by the institutions of police and law enforcement in general in the United States means that those costs, when they screw up, are passed on to the taxpayer, not the institution. So there's no incentive to do it right. So, uh, you know, even if this were a situation where the police were intervening or would intervene, it, it, it's probably worth it that they're not. And I hate to say that, you know, one girl catching a beatdown is worth it. But, yeah, you can weigh that against, say, I don't know, a dozen people getting shot by police or getting beat up by pol police. beatdowns are worse than beatdowns by teenage girls. No, no, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, bold statement, unpopular opinion needs to be said here, right? That you know what what so the reason I'm covering the story is not, hey, look at this isolated incident. And you know, it's funny is you know, we, we saw that 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 uh you know woman in a chokehold by police in Australia for not wearing a mask and in the United States in some places, even in New York, no, not an issue. They don't care that people are brawling in the street without masks. They're not rushing in with SWAT teams to break up the fights because the people aren't wearing masks. No, they don't care. So the, the, the bigger part of the story is, is really buried at the end here. The hands-off approach comes as the police, okay, sorry, no, sorry. Top NYPD officials have also spoken out against the local reform, calling it dangerous, but have denied a slowdown despite video leaking out from a weekly cop stat meeting capturing precinct leaders telling Chief of Department Terrence Monahan that cops were, quote, afraid of facing charges over the law. Over the last month, arrests have plummeted with cops making nearly 60% fewer callers, according to NYPD statistics released Monday. And that's over the last month. This isn't just corona. I mean, this is obviously uh, in, in response to that and the, the whole, you know, greater awareness of police brutality around George Floyd's murder and the George Floyd uh, protests slash riots and the, the uh, new resurgence of BLM, Black Lives Matter, as a movement, not the organization of Marxists, but the broader movement legitimately with a grassroots base that is now particularly angered, not just by lockdowns and shutdowns, but the economic manipulations around that. Again, when you, we say the system is set up for the rich to get richer and the poor to get poorer, which category do you think most black people in America are in? I mean, obviously most of us, you know, it's like the 99.9%. But uh, in particular, black people have been especially disadvantaged by 
the economic hardships that the government has imposed with the uh, virus with a lower mortality rate than trying to spend a counterfeit $20 bill in Minneapolis as the excuse. So uh, this article you know, really buries the lead here. The bottom of the last sentence in it, cops are also pulling over fewer drivers issuing a quarter of the normal speeding tickets with the city speed cameras violation count holding steady. So it's not just due to a total, like you might say, oh, Adam, that's just because of Corona overall activities down. And I'm sure that's responsible for part of it. But if the city's speed cameras violation count is holding steady, and who knows, you know, I'm sure there's all sorts of manipulation around it. They, they dial it down the sensitivity. Now, if you're going half a mile over the speed limit, you got to take it, you know, I, I don't know. Um, but it would seem there is a genuine trend of police backing off. And there is a, a unique moment under this cloud of Corona that is an opportunity for significant police re reform in America. And this is why, you know, I think as, as an ally of the freedom movement overall, obviously not, uh, you know, the Marxist organization of BLM, but the movement as a whole calling for police reform, calling for accountability for police. They, they, they are, you know, at very least an ally. And, and I think uh, deserving of that recognition, if, if not out, outright support by a libertarian. And I, we see the examples with, uh, with, with Spike Cohen and Joe Jorgensen, the current Libertarian Party nominees for vice president and president. And as we uh, discussed with Spike Cohen as our guest yesterday, going to these rallies, they are getting an awesome reception. And you're not saying, I'm a Marxist. No, you're just saying, look, I agree that we have a problem in our system because it acts in many ways as if black lives don't matter. And just recognizing that, you know, I heard, I've heard a lot, some of the criticism, pandering to these leftists isn't going to get you any support for and it. Well, uh, uh, sorry, it is actually. And being able to reach out to people who are, you know, who represent the base of the movement rather than discounting them uh, and, and painting them with the broad brushes, you know, the, the people who are affiliated with the national organization by the same name, really uh, cuts us off from uh, the good work that uh, we're seeing the examples of with Spike and Joe right now. And as he told us, actually getting endorsed by a lot of local Black Lives Matter associations or, or, or organizations who had no idea who the Libertarian Party was before this. So it is working. And this is a really incredible moment in American history underneath the cloud of Corona, the wave of police reform that we are are are, are going through right now in so many beautiful ways.